Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, Palace Guards, an unexpected buff. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about what do I think about these revised Palace Guards. So of course, we've got to have a video on them. Been giving them a try out all morning now. We had sort of 10 battles with them, 15 battles with them since the update. And starting to get a little bit of a feel for them. Because quite a lot has actually changed with them. Um, and... I'm enjoying them. First time I've always hated the Palace Guards. We did an updated video on them probably a month or two ago or start of the season 7 whenever it was. And I still didn't really like them even though they were, were improved upon where they were. But yeah, now they're a nice unit. Now they're sort of truly a decent tier 4 sword unit. So what has changed? Well, firstly and foremost, the leadership is now only 210. This makes this unit incredibly cheap for a tier 4. By far the cheapest tier 4 you know, you basically think if you think of Kondo is 170, uh, or something like a Land Knight, 175. Uh, Prefecture Guard's 180, so you only 30 leadership above a Prefecture Guard to get to a Palace Guard. And now that these guys have been upgraded, they're really pretty decent. Um, let's see what a kit costs. 28, pretty cheap actually for Heroic Era as well. Let's restock them while we're here. Um, Doctrine-wise, I've thrown a few bits on them. Charge cooldown, they have a pretty decent charge. That was something that really changed at the start of the season. And the charge has been pretty nice for a while. So, yeah, well worth having that charge cooldown. Ironsides, to make the unit a little bit more tanky, gives you that 10 second buff, 150 damage, um, defense increase to piercing, slashing, and blunt. He's really, really decent. So it's a really nice little doctrine to throw on. Yes, I often forget to use it. I only seem to remember to use it on my paladins for some reason. Um, but in theory, it's a good idea, so long as you remember to use it. <laughs> uh, and of course, it's that extra slashing and blunt damage, well worth having a little bit of extra charge damage from the blunt, and they do shield bash, which makes use of blunt damage, so yeah, worth having that on, along with a little bit of slashing damage as well. Increased block, and then I just put on the extra piercing defense to try and make them that little bit more tanky. So what else do we get on them in terms of veterancy line? Some people will probably disagree with me here, but I think top is the way to go. Yes, they are more tanky along the bottom line. You're getting like the 20% defense increase. You know, yes, that will actually make them pretty high on things like piercing defense. You know, you'd be you'd be higher than this because this gives them a 5% reduction. So it's effectively be like a 25% increase. You know, you'd be sort of well into the 800s, maybe sort of nearing 850, something like that. But for me, in reality, you don't, I don't need... An, a, a slow tanky unit that does no damage. You know, I'll just use Imperial Shields if I want to do that, or Stalwarts, and they do damage. So, for me, the unit needs the top line to make it what it is. That 15% damage to infantry, damage increase base by 10%, double strikes, all this sort of stuff, um, the block break and the shield bash, all these things really go to make the unit more of an aggressive unit, and that, for me, is what they need to make them a versatile um assault unit so for me you know you've got the iron sides to give them the extra tank they're already at 700 piercing defense you know with the iron sides you're talking 850 but they're they're not a slouch and they've got 11.3 on the hit points they are pretty tanky and we'll see that in battle they don't really need the bottom line in my opinion at least that that's kind of the conclusion i've come to in terms of what has changed then in terms of unit orders well guard the throne really really interesting um uh, ability that's been introduced the unit immediately takes a defensive stance they get reduced charge damage to the front and it gets cc immunity for five seconds i'll throw in a little clip here now of a short sword trying to uh, cc stun them and you'll see once you activate obviously you only get that five seconds so it does tick off pretty quickly but it does actually stop them from getting stunned it is actually really quite funny when short swords try and do their <laughs> their knockdown skill in the middle of you and nothing happens no one moves because they've got cc immunity but it's effectively like a brace skill. They basically brace, and they still attack with their little their little miniature swords. I don't even know what you call them. They're almost like scimitars or, or falchions. They, so they just basically go into a sword unit's brace mode, and they do it immediately. They don't have to form a formation, whatever sort of um, loose formation they're in. They just crouch, brace, and still do damage. Then when you press it a second time, they use the for the power skill, which basically they move like in a mini charge towards the enemy soldiers, and then they cause them knockback and damage. 
and it's quite effective. They do a reasonably decent amount of damage with their guard the throne with their with their push forwards on the on the second part of it. So I tend to walk into enemies, brace, then for the power, and then I tend to follow it up with the charge. All the time, obviously, making use of my iron sides to hopefully negate some of the damage as well. Anyway, though, let's hop into a little bit of a battle with them. Let's see how we can get on, and let's see who we can flatten with our palace guards. So, it's safe to say this game didn't really kick off exactly how I wanted it to. We're stationed a little bit at the top. You kind of see, you know, sometimes you get serfs like this, and well, you might as well kill them. A free kill is a free kill. They don't call me Evo Slayer of Peasants for no reason. Um, but kind of, I kind of was a little bit annoyed. The team got a little bit carried away, let's say and really just stacked at the top of this tower. And I, I really didn't want them to do this. I don't really like fighting at the top of the towers. One, they've got a direct line of sight with that ballista. Two, you're very trebable. And it, it's just a very narrow fighting environment in which you have really little control about how things develop. They've also got archers now shooting and etc, etc. So I wasn't really thrilled about where we were sort of making our stand. I would rather they sort of allow the enemy to get slightly off the tower and then you can get a nice clean charge into the side of them and you can normally wipe them pretty convincingly and then maybe you can counter-attack and push down the tower. But anyway, we have a little explore. I get shot by that goddamn ballista. <laughs> but I haven't brought my unit up. It's still on the stairs and I don't want to be shoving it on the tower. I, I can't believe they didn't um, Trevor's, to be honest. I really, really thought they were. But... The unfortunate side effect was that we actually lost quite a lot of our units basically sat on this tower. A couple of units of men-at-arms and paladins and, and quite a lot of losses were sustained. As they start to uh, make their push, I'm sort of caught in this, uh, I want to help the team. And, you know, I'm always that guy who goes on to the point, you know, and I'm really quite careful. But at the same time, I also feel like I'm at risk being suicide here. So we push in and brace initially. I felt those four Tabrashos on the right are my biggest concern. This spear unit, um, or the shield unit, really isn't too much of a problem. And, of course, we cut through them pretty convincingly. But I don't want to start straying into that unit of four Tabrashios. I don't get an active block like Paladins. You know, I'm not really wanting to take them on head-on in a very narrow funnel that is that siege tower. And we've also got quite a lot of enemy units. You know, these shield maidens coming around. And ultimately, it didn't seem worth going back up. I felt kind of bad here because, you know, I always like to support the team and, you know, I don't really like just sort of leaving people effectively to die. But in that case, I really felt like it was suicide to keep pushing up there. And that's kind of why I left the start of this clip in uh, to the clip, because I kind of want to show all my decision making and, and things that we do on our videos because I don't always get it right. So I'd be kind of interested to see what you guys think about that. But anyway, with that going on, I was coming back to the supply point to heal. I noticed we've got a lot of these archers up here and I'm thinking that I want to kill these guys but they're going to run away and obviously I'm probably not going to be able to catch them with my unit but they run themselves down a dead end and there's a nice unit of spear sergeants here. Okay, well, uh, two enemy heroes, both range heroes are so not too much of a threat and we get friendly support. I push up, I brace. You see the damage we get on the brace? I then go straight in with my shield bash. And look how quickly we just smash through that unit. Absolutely cut them to pieces super, super quickly. As we get friendly support on, I turn the unit around and go and send them towards the archers. Um, I just wait till they get on the straight, put them in the charge, and then that enables me to go back with my hero just to sort of help these stalwarts with these remaining spear sergeants. Because stalwarts, once you get a few units behind you, a little bit of a pain to deal with them. Obviously, you don't have a cover commander or anything like that, so it can be a little bit difficult. But the palace guards obviously do an absolutely fine job killing those. I think they're a rat and vipers. Bit of a rare sight, to be honest, in terms of archer units. But I send my unit back down to the supply point while well, I just very, very slowly poleaxe these last two spears to death. But we get through them. But it's most important is how much damage we did one on the brace once we walked into that unit of spear sergeants. And they are a, a leadership-wise more expensive unit than this. And then, second, when we flicked onto the For the Power mode, how much damage we did on that, basically on the shield bash. Because I was already in the unit, they basically insta-shield bashed. And the amount of damage they did was really quite intense, and they cut through, you know, a shield unit really quite effectively. So I was very impressed with how they performed in that situation. And, you know, I think I would probably have expected to win that fight with the old palace guards, but not anywhere near as quickly or anywhere near as convincingly as we did there. Unfortunately, as we come back, the A point is in a really bad way. 
And I'm a bit nervous here. There's a lot of stuff around that corner, including range. But more importantly, there's a unit of fourth brashers, which I don't really know how to deal with. Our stalwarts go for it, so I really have no choice but to help. See, I do care. <laughs> and so I start to push around the corner. I try and just get a bit of stun on the fourth brashers. I push in and I brace. We immediately get a hero kill. But when I go then on my fourth power, look how many kills we get. Immediately, sort of 40 kills. And then I've still got my charge. First hero kill. Wait for it, wait for it. Second hero kill. And I don't think we actually secure that one, but effectively we get our third hero kill there as well. And we take pretty minimal amounts of losses. So that worked really well in that situation. I was able to sort of push the flank slightly, which negated some of the benefit of their Fortabrachio, because as well I was able to get a little bit of stun on them with my hero so they didn't hit my unit too hard. So that enabled me to get close to the enemy spear unit, and then I could brace. So I braced into them, and they basically did no da damage to me from then on. And once I'd got that set up, I was doing damage to them, but they weren't really return damaging. Then I gave it a few seconds, put on my full power, and then that meant we basically just we just wiped everything immediately in front of us. But because I'd used my brace and then my sort of shield bash, for want of a better word, I still had my charge and I could sort of follow up through the remaining unit. And that seems to be the way I tend to run them. Brace, shield bash, charge. And that seems to be the most effective way, at least kind of in my opinion so far. So things are going really well. I'm really enjoying the unit so far in this match. I'm thinking about where I want to go next. Now, I've got my eye on those pikes. You see them right at the top of the wall up there. But I'm also conscious they're pressuring the A point. I, I really want to go for those pikes more than I want to go to the A point. But obviously, I don't want to lose the game. Not necessarily, at least anyway. But as I start to go around, these pikes actually make their push. And they're going for our supply point. I don't know if this was the right decision or not. But it was kind of interesting to actually test on Impike, so from a video point of view, it was probably worth it. <laughs> so as we come round the corner, we catch some of them. And as I come in, they go on advance, and I instant brace. Of course, because we're stun immune, their advance basically does nothing. Eventually, my five second stun immune runs out. That short sword did absolutely the right move in terms of waiting for my stun immunity to come out before he used his ultimate. But that enables me to get quite a bit of damage in. And then I go for the charge. It was a bit of a wonky charge on my part, to be honest. Not very good. But look, we haven't taken a single unit loss yet. And we've basically just wiped a full stack of Imperial Pike Guard. I know, arguably, they're not the best 1v1 unit at any point. So, you know, you've got to kind of make of it what you will. But the fact we don't really take any losses, and we pretty convincingly beat them, shows what the Brace skill is like. Particularly in terms of resisting um, the damage from their advance. Makes it a really, really nice unit now. But in the meantime, we do unfortunately lose the A point. That was kind of what I was saying in terms of not sure if it was worth it or not. But it did go, and so I fall back to the supply point to get heal up. And I'm thinking that I'm probably going to want to be falling back to base here. You know, because if I can fall back from here, I can then sort of try and get um, a bit of a defense on the final base point and see what we can kind of do from there. Just getting a little bit of healing on the unit. But so far, I think it's safe to say, the unit has done itself pretty proud. You know, I'm quite pleased with how they performed. And it's really all down to that bracing skill. The fact you can push in and brace and get that stun immunity makes it really nice. I think that combined with the leadership reduction, though, is what really makes them an actual, really a viable unit now. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy them more than my paladins. But actually, for, for a change of pace, you know, actually, I, I almost do. And for a unit that I've never liked, you know, I've never got on well with the Palace Guards. I've never really liked them. I know some people did kind of get on with them before, but I've personally always felt them to be a little bit of a crap unit. That They really are properly viable now. That was a completely crap ultimate, wasn't it? Well done, Evo. <laughs> but with that, the enemies just do a little bit of a condo charge. I kind of don't really get this very neatly sort of lined up. We get a little bit of bracing damage. We get a little bit of shield bash damage, but not a lot. And I was a little bit nervous about that cavalry in the alleyways. I, I didn't really want to go on some wild goose chase, chasing down a couple of loose condos. So I kind of pulled the unit back around the corner and wait to see kind of how the situation ends up developing. And then we kind of get into a bit of a tough one. I send the unit back to the supply point. Get them to go healing up. You know, I've had over 130 kills, four hero kills with them now. So they've certainly done pretty well. But one, the unit is starting to diminish slightly. We're down to 20 of them now. And we want to 
I can't really pick and choose my fights quite the same anymore. You know, once you're down to final point, those sort of smaller flanking fights, which I think in this battle we've proved is what the palace gods really do very well. You know, it's always another another quality ultimate there by Evo. <laughs> um, they do very well, in, you know, in those flanking fights against the Imperial uh, Pike Guard, against those um, Spear Sergeants. You know, okay, it was a slightly bigger fight with the uh, Fortabracios and the Paladins and the Men at Arms and the other couple of units, but still we're able to kind of get the upper hand. You know, in a fight like this, you tend to be fighting against larger clumps of enemies trying to push in together as kind of one unified mass. And that's where I think the unit tends to struggle a lot more because it's really hard to actually convincingly win a fight in a short period of time. So the damage starts to rack up on them in a way that it doesn't on, say, something like a unit of stalwarts. So we come down here. They've still got their cannon operational at the moment, which I was kind of hoping it would have been taken down, but it doesn't look like it has. I had a quick check, I think, to see if I'd got a cover in, but I only got a ground bombard with me, and I thought that might have been a little bit unnecessary to t <laughs> to try and kill one culver in. So, yeah, I thought, let's give that a miss. Wait for that. So I decided to pull back. I was half thinking that maybe we can just flank round the back. You know, it didn't look like there was that much stuff down that alleyway, and if we get round behind them, we can probably make a, a fair stab at trying to overwhelm what's there. But, yeah, there's actually quite a lot around that corner I mean by quite a lot I mean a hell of a lot and so I immediately went off that idea and thought yeah sod that I'm not going around that corner that seems like almost certain death so I come back come back round and we're looking what we decided to want to do and we get a unit of con um, condos basically coming in bring the unit back round I've got to take the fight I've got to try and help the shields so I go for the charge pretty decent charge with this unit you can see what it's like against a static unit like that quite a chunk of damage I go for the brace I managed to get to face the enemies, and then I go for my shield bash. I should maybe have stayed in the brace formation here. But you see, we're now up to 160 kills, but then a couple of units of paladins charge in. I unfortunately lose quite a bit of my health, which limits my abilities, and it's not looking good. I see this dual blade coming in, and I'm just able to get my ultimate up in time. I'm actually able to finish him off, but as I back off, I get shot by a stray bullet, and unfortunately, that spells the end of my life. But I mean, it shows what potential this unit has. If I'd had five hero kills and 160 unit kills with palace guards pre-buff, I'd have been absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> you know, it's almost, almost unthinkable. So the rate of change has been really very impressive. And they were definitely a unit that well needed the buff. And I think it's nice to see that actually it's, it's unit tree stuff that's getting a buff and it's not through promotions. You know, we've had a lot of promotions and I kind of a little bit fed up with them by this point so it's really nice to see stuff getting introduced that is not introduced via a promotion and certainly seems like a very positive change in my opinion unfortunately we do end up eventually losing this game i go for one sort of last ditch push with these um berserkers the team was trying to get on point you know obviously i just i just go for it basically you know we've got to try and stop them getting on the point try and just get what damage in we can and then as the berserkers turn up i just go Hell for leather, straight in for the charge. Managed to actually avoid the bulk of the Treb amazingly. And actually they do okay pushing into this sort of cluster of variety of stuff. And we do slightly get onto their gun line to, to pick up a little bit of extra damage. And we do, we do I think, get that third um, Berserker charge mode off, which we do eventually get onto. But ultimately, there's a little bit too much stuff and a little bit too much damage on poor old Evo. And I eventually get myself cut down. That goddamn short sword, uh, short bow escaped though. <laughs> But that really sums up my experience with the Palace Guards. Definitely a vastly improved unit. If you didn't like them before, I would certainly recommend you check them out again now because they are a really fun unit in the current meta. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for a lot more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys. I shall see you all on the next video.